What's up everyone, Lance Hedrick here, and today we're gonna to look at an exciting new development for people steaming milk at home. So a few years ago, the Nano Foamer was released, and this little lightsaber guy absolutely revolutionized how people were able to create microfoam at home. Just heat up milk, put this inside, create a vortex, make delicious microfoam that also would allow you to pour incredible latte art. Now I actually have made some videos on this in the past, I'll link just one right there, and I actually did a masterclass for Nanofoamer, so whenever you buy one, you get the masterclass with me. Now over the last few years, the company Subminimal has created something new and fresh and even easier than this. There's a somewhat steep learning curve, I guess, with this and a lot of people didn't really enjoy faffing around with it if they didn't really understand it. So what he created is the Nanofoamer Pro. Now before I continue into this video, I would like for you to take just a second and hit the like and subscribe if you've enjoyed my content in the past. Of course, if you're new to the channel, welcome. We do all things coffee related here. The first video I ever posted on YouTube was about how to steam milk. So silky milky and you getting delicious milk at home is a huge passion of mine. Might sound silly, but it's true. So not only does this product froth the milk for you, but it has a base similar to like electric kettles where it heats up the milk at the same time. So what he's tried to do with this product Product is give you something that is essentially a steam wand. So not just a frothing wand, but something that heats the milk up for you and gives you the perfect texture all on its own. Now that's a tall task to ask of any type of product, to give you barista-like texture like from an espresso machine with something like this. So today's video will be dedicated to seeing if this is something you should outfit your kitchen with if you are someone that owns like a flare type of lever device that doesn't have a steam wand, a cafe let robot, or any of those things, and, and if this is a, a good option for you at home. Uh, or if it's, you know, if you have a machine and you don't enjoy using the steam wand, maybe it's a difficult steam wand to use or you just want something that's more streamlined. I know how much you enjoy your daily cup of coffee. Maybe it's daily two or three or seven cups of coffee. I don't know who's to judge. You can have what you want. That makes your day a little easier a little bit more enjoyable. But what I enjoy doing when I'm drinking my daily cup of joe is I enjoy reading Stand Art Magazine. The video today is sponsored by Stand Art. Thank you so much, Stand Art. Now, I personally believe that it's a perfect complement to that morning cup when you're trying to get your mind right for the day and you're sitting there and you're drinking a cup of coffee and you can go through and read different coffee stories. On top of that, it, it sometimes, you know, has cute people in it. Like uh, this person I find really attractive. Um, I don't know, you can, you can kind of have your own opinion on that, but I find him just beautiful. It is me. If you would like to try out Stand Art Magazine, you can use my code, which is linked in the description below Low, but it's also right there. You'll get one of the additions, say this one, for free, along with a small sample of coffee. All you have to do is pay for the shipping, which is nine US dollars worldwide. Start up your subscription. It helps me because they track that code, helps me with the sponsorship, and I love working with Standart because they're beautiful magazines and they feature brilliant authors like myself. Okay, let's continue on. How is this working? Well, first off, of course, you have the thermocoil at the bottom, which is heating up the milk just like an electric kettle would do. So if we take a look at something like the fellow you have on the bottom that same type of coil going on and that is how this heats up the water so at the same time that this is is, is spinning the milk, it's heating it up with a similar base technology as these electric kettles. The more interesting part about this is how it's creating the spinning of the wand inside. The wand is pretty much identical with the same nano mesh technology that they implemented on the original nano foamer. It is creating microfoam using this little mesh as it's spinning. But of course, this one has a little motor here that is causing it to spin at its high RPM. So how are they getting it done in this new machine? Magnets. Inside of here, there are magnets placed around concentrically and what that is doing is it's interacting with a complex system in the bottom of this with a motor that runs at 8,000 rpm so as it's meeting with the magnetic coupling it is spinning aggressive and it is able to give you incredible microphone now of course you might be asking well how do we control the different types of foam thicknesses I'm glad that you asked but what they give you is not only do they have different settings built into the kettle itself one being like for small drinks and very little foam and then you build up the foam level and kind of the drink size as you go up in steps. Now they also come with these little magnetic silicon type pieces. And what these are are flow controllers. So you have the thinnest flow controller here, 
middle, and then thick. This does is it'll slow down the vortex. This will speed it up a bit, and this will be the fastest. Now, the way that you use these, dairy milk, where you don't need a ton of foaming agency because the fats and proteins in there are just ready to foam up, you wanna use the black one. Whenever you're doing like plant-based drinks, you have these two options as well because not all plant-based beverages foam the same way. Some you need really, really aggressive, some not so aggressive. Nanofoamer recommends you start with the blue, and that's typically the one that I use when using like almond milk or something but you can switch up to this if you're having difficulties with foaming, getting enough foam for your liking. Now, if you don't use a flow controller inside, it's gonna be a much drier foam with a little bit bigger bubbles. I've done this and there are, it does get a lot foamier. Whee! It's like magic. On the inside of the pitcher, there are two lines to designate where a metal plate is for this to be magnetized to the side. So you're essentially just putting it back to the side like that. And as the milk's spinning by the propeller, it hits this and it can slow the flow down with how big that ridge is. So if you, as you can see, the ridges are different. They're varying in sizes and thicknesses. So what it allows is for a slower one with this, and it goes faster as it gets thinner. The quantity is around 100 milliliters to 220 milliliters. This is about a 200, 220 milliliter cup. So this is around the size that you're kind of targeting if you're going to the max fill line. You can get a little bit bigger for my American followers. You can get maybe up to eight ounce cups. So if you do about two ounces of espresso, six ounces of milk, that's about the maximum. So you're not gonna be throwing down these 12, 16 ounce lattes using this. It's more for kind of the espresso forward milk beverages. You can do something as small as like a Cortado and it will do a good job with that and you're gonna to wanna to use maybe a smaller propeller and the setting of one. It can do drink sizes from the smallest around a Piccolo Cortado up to around an eight ounce or like a 250, 280 milliliter cup. It does do cold foam, so you can also do iced beverages, which is really nice for like iced cappuccinos or something along those lines where you're not wanting to get heated milk. All right, well, without much further ado, let's just go ahead and make something. We have the milk in here. Now, when you put the lid on, it's very, very critically important to make sure that the lid is all the way on. You need that propeller at a very specific height in order for it to work. So I'm gonna make sure that we have it nice and suctioned on as deep as it'll go, as deep as possible. On the touch screen, we're gonna hit. I touched it twice in order to get to level two. I found this is a nice microphone consistency that I enjoy. So it's gonna start spinning and it's gonna slowly start heating up. But now we got this going and I'm gonna pull my shot. Now you might be asking, why am I using a, you know, more of an automatic style machine and not a, you know, like a robot or a flare? It's because later I'm gonna do a little side-by-side -side test. And so with, with a steam wand, I wanted to go ahead and have this on. Why not pull shots with it? It makes life a little easier. Now when it says okay, that means it has reached 55 degrees Celsius and it will keep running and beep again when it hits 65 degrees Celsius. Now I'll show that in a second using a thermometer, but for now we're gonna go ahead and just pour this out to check out the texture, check out the thickness. So I filled just below the max line. I pulled about an ounce and a half of espresso and here we go. And there we have it. Some beautifully textured milk, absolutely fantastic microphone, not a bubble in sight, perfect to make latte art with. This is a really lightly roasted coffee, otherwise I may have tried something a little bit more crazy. This is a Tim Wendelbow uh, Ethiopia coffee. What I've learned while using this is it is imperative to immediately clean this out. Now, because it has this thermal coil on the bottom, you don't wanna put, you don't wanna submerge it in water ever. So instead you wanna just maybe rinse it out inside and take a soft rag and clean it out. Now, because we're working with really high temperature on the base plate, it can cause milk scum. I found that to be the case, especially if you're not really quick at wiping it out. So if you pour it and then you drink it and you wait to clean it, you're gonna have to kind of scrape out the milk scum, similar to a steam wash on an espresso machine. Whenever you steam milk on a steam wand on an espresso machine, if you don't wipe it immediately with a wet rag, it's gonna, it's gonna, it's so hot, it's gonna kind of burn the milk on there and you'll have to scrape it off later or just like submerge it in hot water or something. So it's very important to immediately clean it out right after. Same with the propeller itself. You don't want to have to, you know, submerge any of this in water, just wipe it down and you're good to go. So what we're gonna do now is I'm gonna make another one, but this time we'll watch the temperature as it's going along. I'm gonna put my thermometer inside of the milk as it's going and we'll see just how you know just how long it takes to get to certain temperatures because the idea is after it hits 55 which is around 130 Fahrenheit it's kind of up to you to take it off or to hit or to stop it whenever you are ready to use the milk so whatever temperature you prefer between uh, between 55 and 65 so between around 130 and 150 ish around that area in Fahrenheit so we're gonna go ahead I'm gonna clean this out we'll do another one and we're gonna just read the temperature throughout I'll go ahead and pull another shot so we can pour something else why waste a nice uh, bit of milk. 
and here we go. Now I can't stress enough, it is very finicky if you don't get this lid in all the way. You will not get the results you're looking for. So make sure to take the extra few seconds, make sure it's lined up on the spout, that the gasket is all the way flush with the pitcher itself, and then we're gonna be good to go. I'm gonna go ahead and start my shot. And here we go. So I put it on setting two, I just tapped it twice, and we're gonna let it go. It's supposed to stop at around 55, it should say okay, and then again at 65, it should beep again. So we're currently just at 25, and you'll be able to see this go up as the timer's going. It's spinning, it's just currently doing a little microfoaming type thing, and then it, you'll hear it start aerating here in a little bit. Just at 34, it'll heat up rapidly here in a bit. We just have a nice soft vortex going on. It should speed up and do a deep aeration here in a second. There it was, you heard it, it shot in air. It shot. It made the vortex really deep so it could interact with the mesh and absorb some air to give us some foam. We're getting close to temperature. We're at 54. It hasn't beeped yet. Uh-oh. We're still climbing. Beep for us, baby. Uh-oh. Okay, so the first beep was at 60. Let's see where the second beep is. This might be overheated milk. I have found some fluctuations in the temperatures. We're now at 65. The second beep should be hitting. This is past where I'm comfortable with milk temperature, honestly. We're at 69, 71, or 10 degrees over where it should have stopped. And it stopped at 75. All right. That is hot, hot, hot milk. So that's not ideal, but what maybe we can take away from this is just watch the time. The milk texture still looks really nice. We'll see what the texture is in the cup or what the temperature is in a cup once we're done pouring. I should have swirled the espresso more. There's some bubbles in the crema. So the texture is still really nice. The bubbles are from the crema because the milk was, it was sitting there for a bit. But let's see what the temperature of this final beverage is. The final beverage only sits at 58.4. So it obviously loses a lot of temperature as it hits that ceramic and as it hits this pitcher after the transfer. But just be aware that I have seen fluctuations in temperature. That's actually um, one of the higher ones I've ever seen. It normally does fall below 70, but I would say that the temperature on this is not perfect. But that being said, I've never had a kettle that was perfect either. I have thrown my probe into kettles and have never had the same reading. It's always within uh, two degrees or so. Now it's never been 10 degrees over, but well, just be aware of that. You could always put a thermometer inside there, one of those long needle thermometers, to kind of dictate where it's at or understand where it's at. Pull it out, that might be the easiest solution in order to have perfect control over your milk temperature. But this is, it's gonna be pretty hot at 55. Uh, it's gonna be around, you know, 130 degrees, but people like it even hotter, so. That's actually a perfectly fine drinking temperature. All right, so I've now poured two different cappuccinos. One I did with the steam one on my uh, London Invectus and the other with the Nanofoamer Pro. Now this one has aged just a bit. I won't say which one because my guest taster is in the room and doesn't know which is which. So today I'm bringing on my out of my league wife, Lindsay, to come, the person whose namesake is right here, to come and taste both of these and to tell me if there's a discernible difference in milk texture or if one looks like better than the other, etc. So Lindsay, if you'll come 
come on and uh, taste these two cappuccinos that your lovely husband made you. I would say this one is slightly better. Slightly better? Mm -hmm. Interesting. That is the Nanofoamer Pro. I did steam with the Vectus first, so maybe the milk texture had degraded a little bit by the time she tasted it. This one would have been a little bit more homogenized. But the point of it is, is it's making absolutely fantastic milk texture. It's very impressive. We're now on level five, which is the foamiest level. We're gonna have it foam up completely, and then I'll pour it out so you can see what that actually means uh, with this Nanofoamer Pro. All right, so we're at about 130-ish Fahrenheit. We'll let it go a little longer, a little hotter. Then we stop it. I'm gonna take this out. And you can kind of see the thickness. All right. If you hear that sizzle, that's because that bottom plate is very, very hot. And we actually probably had some, uh, some. I bet there's going to be milk scum at the end of that. So I'm going to go ahead and pour. I'm just going to blop out the foam. So that's where it is on level five. So you can see that meniscus. I didn't really try to do any latte air because how thick it is. But you can see that we have some decent amount of foam. We can probably scoop some more out, actually just so you can kind of see how much foam there is. So this is level five. This is the foamiest it'll get using the black propeller. Now, if you take the propeller out, it will get more dry, but I will say this is probably as dry as most of you are wanting your drink anyway. I mean, look at that meniscus. You can just keep shoveling out foam. Look at that, boom. So it does get quite foamy on level five. So you have all the way from two to five, they, or one to five. They recommend starting with three and working around. But if you want that flat white texture that I was working with, that's level two. And of course you can play around with alternative milks. It does a really good job with those as well. Is a Nanofoamer Pro worth it? Well, of course, worth is in the eye of the beholder, or the person with the budget. I can't speak to that. Does it make fantastic milk foam? Yes, it does. Are there some issues with it? Well, of course, the milk scum comes quickly. If you're doing a lot of drinks back to back, I find that the temperature is volatile unless you're washing it out each time. I'm wondering if maybe that milk scum is affecting the temperature reading or something like that. So it's very finicky. You really need to clean it out. You really need to make sure that lid is fully seated uh, and just to ensure that everything's gonna work properly. But it does make great texture that's latte artable that is capable of homogeneity with your espresso that gives you that nice foam milk mustache that we all crave so much so I say in my silky milky handbook of products I recommend this is definitely a plus of course I still think that the nano foam original is fantastic uh, if you're willing to like heat up your milk with a microwave or something along those lines but if you don't want to faff around with that this has the base in it that will heat it up and stop for you. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that this kind of review was helpful. Thank you to Standart for sponsoring the video. Again, check out that link if you want a free magazine and some coffee and uh, maybe check out their full subscription. Anyway, that's all for me today. I hope that you brew something tasty and cheers.